Hi, I'm Rachel. I work on our sales team here at Liquid Instruments. Today I'm stepping away from the sales floor to talk to you a little bit about linear phase response of infinite impulse response filters. Moku Lab features 12 lab instruments, from lock and amplifier and oscilloscope, through to laser lockbox and digital filter box. Moku Lab can implement both finite impulse response and infinite impulse response filters. In this video, we'll use Moku Lab's digital filter box instrument to illustrate the effects and importance of linear phase response of IIR, or infinite impulse filters. When we look at the characteristics of electrical filters, we often look at two plots, the amplitude response and the phase response. The amplitude response describes the filter gain versus frequency. The phase response tells us the relative phase delay of the filter at different frequencies. But why are linear phase responses as functions of frequency important for filters. Let's take a look. Suppose we have this purple waveform and we want this signal to pass through a filter with minimal distortion. Instead of looking at the signal as a whole, we can decompose the signal into three different frequency components of at f, 3f, and 5f. This is very approximately a square wave. We could add many more odd harmonics to create an ever more accurate square. But for this example, three components creates an approximation to a square wave. To retain the shape of the signal, we need not only the amplitude, but also the relative phase for each frequency component to remain unchanged. In other words, we want the filter to generate the same amount of delay at the three different frequencies. We can use a Python script to visualize what happens when the filter induces distortions in amplitude and phase. First, we change the amplitudes. We can see by changing the amplitude of the three different components, the shape of the waveform remains square-like, only a little distortion. On the other hand, changing the phase creates significant distortions in the time domain and the output signal is not all that square-like. So what defines a filter that produces the same amount of delay across frequency? Let's imagine that we have a signal S described as a function of frequency omega. After a theoretical filter of unity gain, but constant delay tau, the filtered signal can be rearranged as this equation. We can see the phase of the signal is a linear function of the frequency with a slope equal to negative tau. This means in order to minimize phase distortion or to achieve constant delay across frequency, the filter should have a linear phase response as a function of frequency. The slope of the phase equals the negative delay time of the filter which is also called group delay. If the filter has a constant group delay, it introduces no phase distortion. In practice, it's hard to make an IIR filter with constant group delay across the entire frequency range. However, some filter types are known to have better phase response than others. Let's use two Moku labs to demonstrate. The top silver Moku lab is used as a waveform generator and the lower black Moku will be used as the digital filter box. It's super easy to configure any Moku to any of the 12 instruments. Let's connect to the silver Moku and launch the waveform generator. We generate two sine waves, one at 100 kilohertz and another at 300 kilohertz. Then, importantly, sync the phase between these two signals. Next, we connect to the black Moku and launch the digital filter box. The input control matrix adds two waveforms together, and we can use the inbuilt Moku oscilloscope to examine the signals before and after filtering. Enabling the probe points before and after the 500 kHz low pass Bessel filter we can see we have a minimal phase distortion. Next, let's change our filter to a Butterworth filter. A Butterworth filter has a Schaper roll-off. However, it induces some phase distortion, as shown on the iPad. Finally, we change the filter to be a Chebyshev 1 filter, which has a very sharp transition after the cutoff frequency. However, it has a very nonlinear phase response. You can clearly see the distortion on the Moku oscilloscope. The effect of nonlinear phase response is even more pronounced with a square wave. Let's repeat this experiment with a 100 kHz square wave. 
we can clearly see that the odd harmonics components are slightly misaligned even after the Bessel filter. It's getting worse with the Butterworth filter and the waveform is completely distorted with the Chebyshev 1 filter. So dependent on the application, if the modality of the signal in the time domain is important, such as audio, it's important to choose a filter with better linear phase response. Thanks for watching and see you next time.